Uh, yeah. It's a local group from uh, El Paso, Texas. Yeah. I love this shit right here. Yeah. BT Tales from a Gemini. That is the walk from Feline Fox from El Paso. Let me tell you something. Last week's guest got us so got me and my producer Wyatt so hyped. I, I mean this. We got so hyped after talking to you that we, I mean, that whole week, man, I've been just on cloud nine. I've been like, man, ain't nothing gonna hold me back. I've been like, I've been just like seriously walking on cloud nine and, and not fearing shit. Like, I wish somebody would fuck with me. <laughs> my guest was Kenneth. Kenny Bigby Jr., uh, 32nd African-American Navy SEAL. And I know this guy because I go to his gym every week, hit the bag. I look horrible, but he helps me out. I hit the bag. I was in another, uh, another just like I, Monday. I, don't, I couldn't get it together, man. Like I couldn't, I couldn't move for some reason. I couldn't get it together. But anyway, it, the first episode got us so hyped. And the stories, man, we laughed. And I was like, wow. I mean, my jaw was wide open. I didn't know, I didn't know half the things I thought I knew about you. And then I was just like so, just I mean I couldn't wait when I I, when I say couldn't wait I couldn't wait to have part two. I remember we were talking after the uh, after the show, yeah, yeah. and you were telling us uh, more stories, and I go, man, we got to do it. I go, we got to run it back. I, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I was no, like, no. we got to run it back because I didn't get to half the things I wanted to get to because just you your story here in Indianapolis could have been a whole episode, <laughs> and then your journey. To being a Navy SEAL and being in L.A. and what you had to do to survive. And then the part about the Navy SEAL. So it's like you had so much, man. And I mean, the stories are funny. They're inspiring. So, Kenny, man, I'm glad you're back, man. Thank you so much again for coming. I mean it from the bottom of my heart, brother. Hey, the honor is mine. It's always a good time with you, man. Man, no, I mean, no, it, it's my honor with you, man. Like I said, you're so inspiring. I mean... And I wanted to ask you, because because uh, last night I, I was looking over David Goggins' stuff. And it's yeah. so funny because yeah. I never looked at his stuff. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I follow him on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I hear him, but I don't. And that's no disrespect to him. I hear yeah. him, but I don't. Because yeah. I see him when he's, okay, I, I go, that's good. Yeah. So yeah. to get a, a little, maybe, background on you, I watched him. Yeah. And just that mental, and it made me think, like, we were talking like off the air uh, last week, and we were talking about how tough that 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 uh, that training is. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to tell that story about uh, it was the Singaporean, right? Yeah. The Singaporean oh. military team, <laughs> and what that and what this guy did to get out of training. Yeah, this is a true story. So um, when we were going through training, um, Singapore had sent over a group that had to go through SEAL training. The SEAL training program is straight voluntary. At any point, you can quit. They want to know people that want to be there at all costs. So they sent these guys over. There's about 12 of them. Okay. And, man, those guys, man, that group of them, there might be some bodybuilder Singaporeans, but they were all about 110 pounds soaking <laughs> wet, which is not good for the cold. I know as a brother. Uh, so we get out there, man, and we be sitting there getting surf tortured, which they, they switched to what's called water acclimatization. Mm. Okay. Which is more PC, what, yeah. For for when you lay in the water till you go into hypothermia and you're freezing, uh -huh. it was like we're gonna torture you, surf torture, and they're like, we now must call it water acclimatization, or something like that. Yeah, they. We were like, what the hell? Is this? It doesn't get any better for us just because you call it. <laughs> so they'd be out there getting surf tortured in the ocean. They were so light and little, the ocean would wash them out to sea. They had to say, so. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Are you serious? Yeah, and they were freezing all the time. And <laughs> these guys didn't want to be there. So there was only two of them that wanted to be there, and they were gangster as fuck, okay. right? So the other ones, man, we ended up on a log with these dudes. <laughs> Me and my boy were running with these logs, and the log kept going in circles because we were on one end, and they them dudes just didn't want to be there. So right. the log, these four or five, six guys weren't carrying the log, and we were just running in a circle. So we're like, well, let's get on opposite ends of it, make it happen. This log's about 200 pounds, so we're trying to run up the sand. Like, bro, this is too heavy. So these guys didn't want to be there nonetheless. So this one day, man, the only way that they could leave was by med drop. Med, that means you had a medical drop okay. to get out of the program. Right. You had to get injured. You okay. had to get fucked up. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> one day, man, there was this one dude, man, and I don't disclose a lot of names, but I have to disclose his name. So This dude, um, his name was Law. So he goes, every day, man, we go do the obstacle course. And in SEAL training, they, they mess with you a lot. Okay. So they, have they, fuck, uh, oh, they fuck with your yeah. head all day, every yeah. day. They have to, though. All day. Every day. <laughs> Kevin Hart. So, so they like, he looks at me. They call him for the old course. They call okay. your name. Big B. And somehow we were always next to each other by our, our last name. So they're like, Big B. And you get up. Who y'all? And you go do the obstacle course. So every day they say, Law. And he'd be like, and they'd be like, Sad. Sad. <laughs> 
and he didn't want to say it. He's like, they're like, if you don't say it, we'll torture the class. And he's like, I am the law. Every day they made him do this, right? Then then they he'd go run the course. So we go out there one day, man. These dudes didn't want to be there bad. Their country forced them, right? So we're sitting there, man. This dude looks over at me, he goes, Big B. I said, What's up, law? He goes, Big B. Said it just like this. He goes, Big B. I said, Yeah. He goes, I don't want to be here. My country want me to be here. Today I go home. I said, today you go home. I knew the only way he could go home is if he gets fucked up bad. I was literally, Big B. I said, yeah, he go, Big B. My country going to be here. I don't want to be here. Today I go home. They said, law. They said, sad. He said, they said sad. He don't hear. I am the law. I said, law, wait, what, what, what was that you were saying about you don't want to, you going home? What, what, what does that mean, bro? He went off, did the obstacle course. So there's one obstacle. It's called the slide for life. What's up, man? <laughs> This is about 30, 40 feet in the air. The reason why it's that high is because they, man, they did some studies, man. They had us in a human trap of, of studies and whatnot because at around 40 feet, you start below that, your mind doesn't really get the perception of fear of heights. For instance, when you're jumping out of the plane, till you get up to about 100 feet, there's no frame of reference for your brain to really be afraid. You, when you jump out of the plane, even if you have a fear of heights, you don't. There's nothing to, to refer to to realize you're, you're high and you could die. Okay. Once the trees start to come into play and building, you're like, oh, shit, I'm kind of high. You start, uh. Yeah, you start tripping. <laughs> so this thing's about 40 feet right where it fucks with your head. Right. So you got to grab it and then pop up on another level. Grab it, pop up. You get to the third level, you're about 40, 50 feet in the air. And then there's a rope that goes down at a 45-degree angle. And you scooch down the rope or you get on top of it like a squirrel. It's <laughs> like you got trying to get a nut. So... <laughs> This dude, he grabs it, and he did it the sloth style. That's where you grab it like this and throw your feet up. And he was like the sloth. He scooted out three of them. Then he lets his legs go and hangs down. They said, law, what the fuck you doing? He did like this. They said, law. He looked back at them motherfuckers. This motherfucker did like this. Let go. You know how you jump in the water with your legs straight and pencil in? Oh. Ain't no water, bro. Straight sand. Oh. And his legs said, fuck him. That motherfucker had the Bambi legs. His legs <laughs> been back and his feet. <laughs> Bro, this motherfucker had no emotional response. Oh, He scooted out. They said, law. He let his legs drop. They said, what you doing? The motherfucker looked down. They said, law. He said, let go. He straightened his body. said, back up. That motherfucker said, oh, yeah. He had the rock eyebrow and everything, bro. Really? He had no emotions, bro. No emotion. That right there to me, that would have scared me. It's me. But he didn't want to be there so bad that he he risked everything. He knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So he steeled his mind. Yeah. Th that to me, in a way, is strong mentally. That's a whole nother mental that, 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 But it really is, though, to yeah. know what's coming. And you, and you go, okay, here I go. Yeah. And you just... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And not, not a sound. No. He didn't do it. I don't know if he took something. I don't know what that motherfucker did. He had no emotional response, but there's one more to the story. What? That day he went home. <laughs> that motherfucker went home, bro. <laughs> Today I go home. I said, damn. He didn't, he didn't even do like a, like a thumbs up or anything? He, did, he didn't look at me and did this. That motherfucker <laughs> just looked at me with the stone cold. I was like, that motherfucker's the real killer. I'm cool on that motherfucker. <laughs> so like, was class over that day? Nah, man, at that point, in, in, when you're in a team's, um, they'll say red line, and everybody looks away, and then they'll handle the situation. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can't look and go, uh. Yeah, at that time, that's what they were doing. So they just, actually on that one, they really didn't. They just, <laughs> they trucked his ass off. They didn't even say that on that one. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, people, will, they'll drown in the water, and they'll resuscitate them. Okay, really? Yeah, yeah you got four to five minutes, and... Uh, science may have changed. You got time before you have any brain damage or not. That's no big deal. So guys pass out on the water. You'll see bubbles. And they'll put them on deck. And then they'll be like, red line. And everybody just turns. And they'll fix dude. And he'll be like, Rah! they'll be like, try it again. <laughs> yeah, that shit happens. That happens. Oh yeah, that's normal, bro. We you had said, a, You said guys drying all the time. Like, like it's nothing. Ah, guys drown yeah. all the time. The, the thing is, SEAL training is hyper, hyper safe. It's super, super, super safe. Now. Okay. So it's not, you're not at risk. There's like, there's a dude swimming over you. It's a dude next to you. Yeah. You're not going to get fucked up. It's, it's very rare. But motherfuckers pass out underwater all the fucking... We had this dude. He was the toughest motherfucker. One of the toughest motherfuckers other than David Goggins. <laughs> Don't forget that. Uh... <laughs> Uh, cause he's a, he's a crazy, crazy motherfucker. Yeah. But, uh, this dude was one of the toughest motherfuckers, man. But he just physiologically couldn't do the shit. 
So every time he'd go in the water, uh, so you do knot tying, you do like a 50 meter underwater swim. So he swam, went down, went back, and the motherfucker passed out, came up, and they resuscitated him. That's, that's like the battle cry. Okay, try it again. Then we did not tie him. Well, you go down, and they fuck with you a lot. So you go down, you tie him. They said, what you doing? I'm doing the bowling. They're like, take it down. So you go in the water. It's a rope. You tie it. And they got motherfuckers trading out on shifts on your ass. You down there on one breath hold, and them motherfuckers, he get tired of holding his breath, and the instructor like, another motherfucker come out. <laughs> You're like, hold on, bro. You cheating. You got a shift change. It's some bullshit. <laughs> so you down there tying a knot. They go like, so they look at it, and they look at you. He done it on him. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. okay, that's pretty good. You like, all right. You go, then you got to get the sign of service. You like, good. They like, good. You like, good. They like, nah. Tie another one, motherfucker. Continue. Oh shit, I gotta do another knot. So you do another one. Shift change, bitch. Next month will come down. He got a full lungs of air. <laughs> what meat bone did you? By then you like yeah. <laughs> Barney went down there. They said, okay. He did one. Okay. <laughs> fucking, they said, okay. Surface. I'm fucking like, yeah. He looked at the instructor. Like, yeah. Uh-uh. I'm going on. Did another one. They said. They said, shit, we getting tired, motherfucker. <laughs> he said, nah, motherfucker, bitches. I'm staying down. He did another one. <laughs> They said, man, motherfucker surface. Some motherfucker said, nah. Some <laughs> fucking drowned. And went back. They brought him out. They said, Barney, you a bad motherfucker. He just, the motherfucker just couldn't sustain a breath hold. But he gave no fucks. He just kept drowning. Like, really? Bro, that dude was fearless. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what? I feel like a bitch because yesterday at LA Fitness, yeah. I, toward the end of, of my lap, I knew the wall was there, yeah. and I was losing my breath. I went, <laughs> I went <laughs> like that, and hit the wall, and I and I looked around me and see if anybody was listening. Because there's a black man, there's gonna be like twelve lifeguards on your ass. I yeah, I literally went, <laughs> and I looked around like that. Go, Did you make okay. the noise and everything, dude? I went <laughs> like this, and then I and I hit the wall. I'm like, I hope nobody saw that. I hope nobody saw. That. I mean, I literally because I thought, man, I had you in mind. I go, fuck yeah. it, man. I go, I got this. I'm, I'm gonna be a yeah. fucking Navy SEAL, man. Yeah. My boy Kenny, I'm all yeah. hyped. I was all hyped from last week. I'm hyped as shit. Yeah. And I was, and I was like, yeah. Yeah. I hit that, and I go, man, god damn it. It was twelve paramedics on site. With six AEDs. <laughs> you good, bro? Black man in the pool, he's in trouble. <laughs> Let me tell you something, though, man. I'm going to tell you the worst part about being a black Navy SEAL. Bro. What? You always be ashy like a gargoyle. See this shit right here? <laughs> See my hand? I, I recognize that on the last. I said, damn, look at my hand. They ashy. Ain't nobody going to pay attention to nothing but that. You swim, <laughs> you get out the water. Don't know, no amount of lotion help a black Navy SEAL, man. They vulnerable to this shit. They predisposed to ashiness. Hey, you know what we should do? Uh, what's oh, that? I make a lotion. We going to make a product? Make a lotion. We go for African American Navy SEAL. It's over with. Black Navy SEAL approved lotion. Man. What? Come on, man. But then, but then it can cross market because they can help a black Navy SEAL can help anybody. Oh man, we rich. Dude. Man, we rich. Come on bitch. now. What's Come up, on now. Bro? Come on. Hey, up, you put it on before you go down huh? and you still maintain your moisturizer? Huh? Come on now. Then we gotta make it oily so when you get out the body, your body glistening and shit. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> Man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I I knew you'd have stories for me, but damn, that shit. It, it, I, I was so enamored. Just it, it's still the mental part of it. Yeah. Last week was the part that just got me, man. Like like we talked about how you got through yeah. and the mental. But when you're underwater, yeah. that's the part of anything I've ever done. Yeah. I can deal with the cold. Like yeah. all last week, I didn't put a jacket on. What? All last week, seriously, yeah. all last week I didn't put a jacket on. Went yeah. outside, people were like, "You crazy?" Go, I'm good. Yeah. When I said, "All right." But it's the water. And that, and that LA fitness story is true. I'm like, yeah. I can't get over like that, that anxiety. And I'm in a swimming pool. I'm in yeah. an enclosed environment, yeah. not even in the yeah. lake, but I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so how do, you, how do you get over that though? Like, how do you like condition yourself? Like, okay, like, you know, that, that, that fear of like, okay, I'm, I'm losing my breath. How, yeah. do you, how do you calm your, hmm, and yeah. then you know you're, <laughs> hmm. yeah, it's both mental and physiological. Okay. So, um, and, and we had kind of a little bit chatted about it, but, so I used to go and I used to keep a log. We talk about the, the mindset. I kept a log of everything I did okay. to prepare to become a Navy SEAL. And one of the things that I would write, um, we talked about the GPS, where, you, where you're here, but you program the destination that you want to be at. Yes. 
and then you navigate along the way. So what I did, I'd write in that in that diary every single day, I am a Navy SEAL, as if I had already made it. So that was programming my GPS. You put it out there in the universe. I wrote it every single day. Yeah. So then I would go to the natatorium. I didn't know how to swim right, but I was in that motherfucker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so every day I would go, <clears throat> and I would go underwater. And um, swimming is one of the few activities, and the reason why I do it is it's easier on your joints. Yes, yes, as you, you get know, older. As we age, and yeah. it also increases your, your lung capacity, your cardiorespiratory efficiency, and yes. stuff like that. So yeah. just with swimming by itself, you'll be able to hold the breath longer. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because of the aerobic and anaerobic training that you're doing simultaneously. Then I used to go under. So you had to prepare for the 50 meter underwater swim. So what I used to do was, was all the way underwater, 50 meters. You can't come up. No, nope. you actually in the system got to go under, do a front flip. Then you got to swim, then come back and then do another like back flip and then surface. Yeah. Something like that. I forget. But you got to do two flips and then do the swim. Right. Wow. So I always had to exceed my own expectations of the standard to make sure that, and talk about mental preparation. Right. So what I would do is I would go do a breath hold. So at first it was like a minute, and I'd be down there chicken, you know, chicken, chicken, chicken head. Boy, please. So I, uh, so I kept getting better and better. One of the things that you do is you can hear your heartbeat in your ears. So psychologically, we talked about the vagal nerve and the vagal reaction, how they, how they work together simultaneously, how right. the mind and body are linked. Right. So one of the things that happens as soon as that you feel um, like you're running out of air, the brain starts to freak out. But what that does is speed up your heart. Right. So if you just focus on your heartbeat, like, chill out, calm down, slow down, right? And then the heartbeat, because you, you slow the mind down via the vagal nerve and vagal reaction, it now tells the body to slow down. So once you become conscious, whatever you focus on, the brain starts to control. So, for instance, if I touch you here, your mental focus went there yeah. subconsciously. Yeah, right. So when I start to focus on the heart, you, you start to be able to slow that down. So whatever you focus on, you get more of, period. That's right. how the brain works. Yeah. So that's what we talked about. Remember, look around the room. You notice white. Whatever you focus on, you get more of. If you focus on negativity, you get more of. Yes, yes. It's, it's how the human mind works. So what I focus on at that moment was the heart. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And then you start to hear the heart rate slow down. So, again, they're, they're linked. So then you're, you're increasing your cardiorespiratory efficiency, and then you're learning how to control the heart. So then my heart would be like, and I'd be like, and your breath uh, hold time goes longer. The funny part is, and I kind of had chatted with you about it, I never thought to go ask the lifeguard. Because I go in there every day, and what I would do is I go under and yeah. I'd hold my breath. So and I keep logs of that, right? So that I could measure my progress just like a GPS does. Now you're here, and you know what I mean? It's logging that. So I say I'm here, I want to program my GPS, this is where I want to be. And then I'm plotting out the course that I'm taking so I can see where I'm at in relationship to where I want to go because everything's relative. So then I would hold my breath, and then I would go do the 50 meter underwater swim. I would just take one breath. So I come from a breath hold, then I come up, and I go, <gasps> and I go, <laughs> and then do the 50-meter underwater swim. Now, the most efficient stroke is the breast stroke. And you do like that because you get you squid. Boom, Squidward, SpongeBob, right? And you, you glide, right? Yeah. I was doing it all the fucking way wrong, bro. Really? I was just kicking my feet, which makes your heart rate go up. My heart was, and I was like, you, ah! <laughs> bro, I was fucking it up. You gotta be like that. You gotta call me out like that. Hey, bro, no, I'm calling me out. I was, supposed to, I was trying to go still training. you. So, so I got better and better. So one time, so by the time I did it, I was up to like three minutes, 30 to four minutes, stuff like that. So I never thought that was a lifeguard. So I go under for three minutes, four minutes, then I would come up, take a big breath, and go straight to do the, the 50 meter underwater swim. Well, the natatorium, is a, it's a hundred meter pool. Okay. So I would go all the way down. I think it's 50, 50 and 50 is what it is. Okay. So I would go all the way down. And I, would, I got to the point where I could touch the wall right after a three-minute breath hold. So I would challenge myself. Cause there you that, go. Yeah, so then I got there, and I started touching the wall. So then what I'd do is I'd touch the wall, and then I'd, I'd, be, bro, I'd be ready to get out. Like you talk, ah! And I'd be like, now I'm going to kiss the bottom of the pool deck. I would just challenge myself. So I'd be like, I'd touch the wall, and I'd go down. And then I would kiss the pool deck, and I'd have to, I'd be real calm. Inside, I'm like, ah! Right? And then I'd surface like, and came up like, yeah, I got this. And then next day I would do it. So then I got to the point where I would touch the wall, kiss the bottom of the pool, come up and start to push back off. And one of my friends that was in, he was actually in radio TV with me in high school. Okay. 
So I came there one day. He was a lifeguard. He says, hey, man. He said, what you about to do? He said, what you doing down here? I said, oh, man, I'm trying to be a Navy SEAL. He goes, okay. I said, we got to do a 50-meter underwater swim, man. And I was like, I'm about, to, I'm about to do that. And he's like, you can't do that shit. I'm like, watch me, motherfucker. <laughs> so I got in there. I did my, I, I, did my uh, I went under. I went down. And at that point, I could touch the wall, go down, kiss the pool, come back up, kick back. I was about 75 meters at that point. He was like, damn. Well, Shortly after that, I go in there and I do the breath hold. All of a sudden, I feel something like it felt like you know when your mom and daddy you you was you was in the uterus, you a kid, right? And your mom and daddy they got one of the moments. They got in the heat of the moment. Your daddy said, "Hey, hey, your mother, it's been a second. You know, you in the uterus? Like, what's going on, man? So, you know, I had some flashbacks, man, some traumatic shit in my head. I'm down there on the water. I'm like, I'm like, daddy, stop, daddy, stop, daddy. <laughs> The fluid, yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I never thought to ask the lifeguard. I and this thing hit me a couple times, and I'm trying to stay zen, bro. Oh, right. um, and this motherfucker calm the heart rate, and then ha, the motherfucker grabbed my neck. Ha, I yanked the motherfucker off. I started yanking back. Come up. I say, man, what the fuck, man? Lifeguard said, man, we thought you were dead. <laughs> I had been under there for four minutes. They just, I never asked the lifeguard. I just went in here and hopped in the pool. Was, I literally used to sit down there like, and to them, it's just, somebody was like, man, it's the motherfucker. He been down there for a second. They was trying to use the hook to pull me out. They said, bitch, we thought you was dead. I said, man, I'm cool, man, shit. Fucked up my motherfucking my cheese mold. <laughs> Did y'all laugh about it afterwards? Or do you still be mad? Well, I, I was shitty. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, they kind of brushed it off. Like, they said, well, next time, fuck ass. I said, man, I'm working on my breath holes because I'm being Navy SEAL. They're like, okay, sure, motherfucker. <laughs> they walked off. I'm like, motherfucker, I am going to be a motherfucking Navy SEAL, bitch. But yeah, it just kind of ended like that, yeah. <laughs> Nobody believed me, man, bro. Well, well, you can't, well, you can't really blame them. Like, oh, shit, you know, we got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't really blame them. Yeah, But, nah, so, but at the same time, if you were down there, they would think, you know, I mean, I would think, it, it, n nobody was wrong. Let's put it that way. They weren't. They, they weren't wrong. They, okay, because but then you know if you were really drowning, wouldn't you be like, boom, boom, like this? Yeah. But you were like, huh. yeah. Like, huh. They thought I had a. Sh it's a shallow water blackout, so you'll be under there and then your body, you just you just go out and then you're just down there sleep. Really? Yeah. They thought I just had a shallow oh water my, blackout. I didn't know that. I, you know the, the the world record for underwater, I think, is 27 minutes. Yeah. By the different dude. A dude from uh, I got his book uh, about breathing. Yeah. Uh, the guy from uh, uh, no, not no, Denmark, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That dude. Uh, what's the name of that book? Is it breathe? Not breathe right, but it's a. Uh, oh, I forget. But I bought a whole book on breathing. Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah. With that, and when you're tired, how to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, yep. dude. Because I remember you. You did something like that in class, talking yep. about the breathing, and I wanted, but you know, I, I can't really talk because you know you, you're in class, so I didn't. Yeah, know, but yeah. no, yeah, no, man. yeah, man. So like we, we talk about um, handling stress, talking right. about the mindset of things, right? right? So obviously, w the way that I put it at um, is that Navy SEALs are the best at being their best on their worst day. So that's peak performance. Run it by, run it by me again. Run it, say it again slower so I can really comprehend that. So everybody, like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a, everybody got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Yeah. That's basically a set, <laughs> right, right? Right, right. So peak performance under pressure is being your best on the worst day or your worst day. That's the hardest. How thing. to mentally compartmentalize? You gotta be able to. You gotta be able to perform when everything's wrong. You wrong. The situation wrong. You still gotta find a way to win. Yeah, and that's a you know that's perfect because honestly I you know I remember and it's true I remember having an audition and probably could have changed my life yeah and uh, it was a big audition and and it, and so as I was going to do the audition I'd stop by the ATM to get something right yeah and as I'm driving I realized shit I left my card in the and that was back in the day you know but ATM didn't tell you in your cards in so I, I go fuck I left my card in the ATM. Ah. So ah. as I'm driving to the yeah. and that's in Hollywood and that was in Marina Del Rey yeah so I couldn't turn around and go back yeah. I was too far in I go yeah. shit. Shit, shit, shit. Somebody's going to take all my $100 out, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I had to go like, ah, oh, shit, my car. Yeah. And I'm going to this audition. And so I'm trying to, you know, get that together. And then I'm there. And Danny Montaducci was part of the show I was going to be uh, yeah. audition for. And I, and I heard him talking shit about me as I'm talking to Dick Clark and Mar wow. Mario Lopez. And I couldn't. And I had all that yep. shit going on. Yeah. And I, and I knew I fucking blew it. And yep. I'm trying to get it together. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. You know? Inside, I'm going, fuck. So I know what you're talking about. And yeah. that's, that's the part. I, yep. I, 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 that's why I love the mental of this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's the part. If, if anybody, it's always the mental. It is. It's always, and that's what it I is. fucking love, man, when we talk about the mental. And like you said, how to perform at your peak performance on your worst day. Yeah. When everything's going downhill. You'd be like, Whew. Yeah. 
the way that I like to put it, so when I'm teaching tactical courses or talking to anybody, and what I'll do today is, is cover three um, tools for peak performance under pressure that you can do ASAP right now, and it'll change the way you perform under pressure on your worst day. Like what? All right, so I'll give you the first ones. Um, the, the first one that you talked about is breathing. So what happens is when you get under stress, there's two sides to the nervous system. You have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. You say, why is that black man using all those sophisticated words? <laughs> right? The source. <laughs> you got it the source. Yeah, they're not allowed to do that. You got you to gotta talk in Ebonics, bro. You know. Hey, man, I'm stressed out, man. You got me all up in my field. That's what I'm saying. Y'all feel me? So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, man, I be, I be having trouble talking to my people. No, I so don't. Trust me. My trust people me, say, hey, man, you got, me, you got me feeling some kind of way. Okay, how's that? Some kind of way, motherfucker. I'm like, okay, you're not helping me, man. I can't solve this issue. Motherfucker, you know what I'm saying. I don't, motherfucker. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I, Kenny, I know what you're saying. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Right? I perform with people like that. Bro. We can't relate to that shit, man. You right? I don't know who Pearl Jam is. <laughs> I don't know what NASCAR is, man. <laughs> Talk about some shit we relate to, bro. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, I, trust me, I know. Uh, bro, our trust people me, are know. never born, boy. They so funny, man. So, you got, you got the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. You got one side of the nervous system that handles stress. And you got the other side that that is for rest and recovery. Okay. So whenever you do any kind of stressed activity, you're in the sympathetic nervous system, and that's cool. But how do we? What happens is you you have access to certain resources depending on the state that you're in or the nervous system. So you want to approach the problem in a state that gives you access to the the most resources that you have. For instance. If I'm in a scared state, I may not be able to think as clearly as possible. Okay. So I have to be able to shift my state to the to the side of the nervous system or the, the side that gives me access to my, my greatest state of resourcefulness. Resources don't matter. The circumstance doesn't matter. Resourcefulness matters. Your ability to use your environment and what you have. Okay? okay. So how do we get ourselves in a resourceful state when the resources aren't available, when you have to be the resource by resourcefulness? The first one is breathing. Breathing immediately, like we talked about the vagal nerve and the vagal reaction, how the mind and body are linked and tied. Yes. As soon as you start to breathe and slow the breath down, then that tells your mind that you're calm. That tells your body that you're calm, and then you enter into a different state of resourcefulness. You have access. So what happens when you stress out, your frontal cerebral lobe, which is in charge of, of thoughtfulness, of, of intelligible thinking, it shuts down. So what it says is, hey, man, um, I, I like to say a tiger jumped out the woods. You know, like, what size are the teeth on that tiger, and which ways are its stripes, vertical or horizontally? You're not thinking that shit. The brain goes, because that's what the thinking mind does. No, I propose that this tiger is going to angle to the left. And your, brain, your brain like, hey, man, we ain't got time for that. Ebonis, ain't nobody got time for that, right? <laughs> Shuts down the motherfucking frontal cerebral lobe. It goes to the, through the, what's called the amygdala, okay, which is, is, is reactionary, the primal brain. Right. It goes, hey, man, that's some scary shit. Run. <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't think nothing else, man. You just, you just start reacting. Right. So whatever is recorded on the subconscious mind, that's just what you do. You do the last thing you know to do under pressure. So I, like I said, I had a Muay Thai guy. He got under pressure. I had a wrestler that was doing Muay Thai. He got under pressure. He just started wrestling in the middle of a Muay Thai fight. Double leg. I was like, bro, <laughs> no. Nah, so, that would be me. You feel me? That's what you'll find out. I, I ain't taking no ass whooping. I'm going to go. I'm 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 wrestle you. Yaka. Yeah. So that's why when you're in arguments, you're like, I didn't mean that. Why'd that pop out? So the thoughtful mind, the intelligible mind in front of Surya Below gets shut down. You just do. You just do. The last thing you knew to do. If that's argue like a motherfucker, it's argue, just cuss the motherfucker out, or double leg, single leg, run. You just right. do the last thing you know to do. That's the value of training. So when you stop and breathe, it resets the nervous system and it starts to wake up the frontal cerebral lobe. It allows you to access the intelligible mind again. So what's important about that is you move, you're gonna, if you're stressed out, you're gonna react. You move from reaction to response. So reaction is just the recording of whatever you had on your brain, which may not be the right answer. Right, right, right. But the, the thing that's most important about response is it lets you be relevant. So you can look and say, I need to do this in relationship to this. The reaction is just a reaction. Hey, man, look, motherfucker, we doing Muay Thai, I'm wrestling, though. That's not relevant. You see what I'm saying? 
So when you when you move and think relevantly, you can make much uh, higher grade and more intelligible decisions and res responses and results. So by just breathing, you take yourself out of the primal brain, out of the, the amygdala and the, the thalamus. So what's important about this, you have what's called the high road and the low road. Okay. So what the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> so on the low road, when you're stressed the hell out, the information uh, kind of goes through a pathway, and, and this is very generalized. It'll come in through the, uh, the amygdala, which is the, the primal brain. Real simple. It's hot. Take your hand off that motherfucker. She's hot. Go get her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So it moves on that path. Then it goes through the thalamus, yeah. which is the emotional center of the brain. Right. That's why if you stub your toe, you feel the pain, and you say, shit, and you just you have an emotion. You like, like you get in the car wreck, you go, oh, you, your brain sees you're about to wreck, and you go, oh, shit, and then you do it, right? It's just how it goes, right? You feel an emotion, and then shortly after that, you start to think. So that's the low road. So when you're really stressed out on the sympathetic side of the nervous system, you're, you're just taking in the information and then reacting emotionally and doing the last thing you know to do. Now, we want, that's reaction. Now, I want to move to response where the high road, is going to go through the frontal cerebral neonatal cortex. So what's going to happen is you're going to be able to um, control or redirect that. You'll still feel the emotion and stuff like that, but you can make a more relevant response. So when you start to breathe, what that does is allow you to access the, the, the better resources to problem solve under, under pressure. So when you're in that situation, right. you couldn't think. Because when you get stressed out, you left the car in the ATM, you hear him talking shit, guess what? Doop! It shuts off the front of the revolver because just do the line I know to do last. Well, that was for that uh, porno movie you did six weeks ago. You know, he, did, he never did that. We just no, playing. We no, just playing. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you're like, you're like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, here it goes. Ah, that's not the line. What the hell are you doing, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, that's, so that's what happened. So if you had stopped and breathe, it starts to wake up the frontal cerebral lobe and you can move from reaction to response and you can make the adaptations you need to be under pressure. And does it matter if you go through your mouth or do your, no or do your nose? Or, I mean, does it matter? You, you go, is this going to be different than like this? There's different theories. Um, typically, when you inhale through the, the nose, it's more efficient cardiorespiratorily. I, I swear, I, I think it's the yoga that helped me. I, yeah. th when you said that, the, what, I, what I remember more vividly than anything, I was in Italy I'm riding a motorcycle. I'm yeah, in a tunnel, yeah. and this car just gets over my lane, and yeah. I, it's a split second. But I swear, I go like this, yeah. And it and it happened a split second, but I but it slowed down in my mind because I go and I go over to the other lane. But I know a car's over there. Yeah, I go over to the other lane, and I have maybe about this much space. Yeah, and I go go to the other lane right here. Yeah, even though that car is there. Yeah, and that car kind of moved like that, and I had enough room. And I go. swear. And I think it, it's the yoga and the breathing because yep. I, I yep. normally would have freaked out. I go, oh, shit, this is it. But instead of doing that, I go, moved over. Everything was good. And then and I get to let the breath out, and that saved me from going, motherfucker, you did it. There you and go. I was like, yeah. And yeah. I drove on. See, because so, so the, what you experience, what I describe it is, I, I, you can relate to acting, right? Right, right. So what happens is, what I tell people when you're training or you made a new habit. Well, how do you make the habit? The frontal cerebral lobe is the, the, the conscious mind is like the writer. It writes the script. So we're talking about acting, right? You got to write the script. If you write it nice and neat, make it out, then the director says action, right? Well, what's action? Action is life. There's your scenario. Boom, here come the car. Wham, action. What, what are we going to do? Right, right. When it's action time, it's action time. Them lights is on. You're yeah. sweating, yeah. you know? Yeah. Everybody's looking at you. Hey, what you going to do now? Yeah. Right? So all, you, all the actor does is read off the script. So whatever script you study, that's what you're going to do when it's action time. Okay. So my point is, whatever habit, somebody asked me, what's the one thing you can do to change your life? The way that I put it is you train how you fight. That's what we say in the combat world, in the warrior community. Change your habits, change your life. So what happened is you wrote the script of breathing by doing yoga. So you kept writing that script. Then it said, action, here come this car. So guess what your mind did? It just, the actor just reads from the script when it's action time. Wow. You follow what I'm saying? Wow, yes. You know, you ain't gonna, so if you write a sloppy script, yeah. if, you a, if you write a bad script, you feel me? Right. When it's action time, you're going to have a bad experience. Right, yeah. You feel me? Yeah, I, 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 um, a case in point, I was watching a video of these, these guys on a motorcycle, 
And his dog was on the side of the road, and he kind of like he was getting in their lane. So yeah. they all freaked out, and they all crashed. And they go, yeah. where did the dog come from? And I go, they freaked out. They were just like, yeah. and they saw the dog. They should have just, okay, there's a dog there. He's yeah. coming over my lane. Yeah. Okay, I should, you know. I Honestly, I really think if they would have had yoga, in bed, but their first reaction, oh, shit, a dog! Yeah. And they all crashed, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and honestly, it's it's from years and years and years of yoga. And then and I think reading that book and yeah. learning about the breath. Yeah, you know, in times of stress, and I think that's helped me out in a lot of situations. I think where I would normally would have freaked out, yep. you know, and it saved a lot of other people an ass whooping when I was mad. Yeah. Like, you know what? Yeah, let me, yeah, let me breathe this in, yeah. and let me like, let me be cool, yeah. and you know, I mean, because I'm honest, I mean, because you know how it is, and somebody says something, you go, oh, okay, yeah, okay, and you got to breathe and yeah. walk away. Where yeah. some people don't have that, you know, no. kind of like you know, what'd you say, and then boom, and you're in. I, I had the presence of mind to go, yeah, let me breathe that in. Okay, I'm good. I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. Walk away. And see, and, and this is what I point out. We started to point it out, and we got to get back to the five whys we started and didn't do on the last episode. Yes, let's get, get that. Let's get it. Because you, 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 you said, what are you doing? The obstacles get in the way and it becomes hard. You yes. Know what I'm saying? So we, we'll come back to that. But one of the things is that, that I point out is all these things are in our culture and we forget about them. So, for instance, you get in an argument, like you said, with your significant other or whatever, and they start getting crazy. They ain't making no damn sense, you know. And this guy was making a joke. We were at the pool swimming. He was like, I was going to tell my friend that I beat a Navy SEAL in the pool because he had fins off because I was swimming with fins. And he said, then you took him off and he was still kicking my ass. He was like, I don't like that. And I said, well, damn. He said, I said, well, man, I said, I, I said something to him. He said, listen, man, I like to do my arguments with irrationality. <laughs> but that's how people, it was a joke, but yeah. that's how people argue. So I thought that was funny. You arguing with somebody and they're not making no damn sense. You're getting heated. And what do you do? Subconsciously, you do like, <sighs> you walk off. So then we think about old kung fu movies. You remember them Saturday night kung fu theater, yeah, right? Yeah. Remember, guy, hoo, 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 hoo. he gets hit. He goes like, boom, he like, what do he do? He was resetting his nervous system. What are you doing? You upset with your partner? You about to do something stupid? You could feel it coming. I'm about to reset the nervous system. It, we we do it subconsciously. Oh. So then when you have that that old saying, you get mad, take ten deep breaths. Well, what was that? They they didn't know the science behind it, but it resets your nervous system. Yes. And you can't think. When you're angry, you're like literally crazy. Yeah. So then when you breathe, it wakes up the frontal cerebral lobe and you can see, you can separate rationally what's what. So breathing is the number one tool for peak, is the first tool I'll give you for peak performance under pressure. The second one is what we call inner dialogue. Yes. And we talk about that in acting also. We talked about the, uh, the method acting. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you move the way that you want to move and the way you talk to yourself. So what, the, rather than use the sophisticated term of inner dialogue, <laughs> we'll, use, we'll use the term coach yourself. So what you tend to say is what you tend to do. So the way that I like to put it is that your brain is like Google. You say, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Your brain's like Google. So if you put into Google... Uh, who's the stupidest motherfucker on the planet? Bam, it'll look that up. Google just looks up whatever the fuck you type in that motherfucker. Right. If you Google why uh, why are human beings so stupid, it'll just look it up. Smartest man on the planet, it'll look it up. Well, your brain is like Google. What I mean, if you say, why am I so stupid? It just looks for the answer. Your brain literally works like Google. They really ain't invent shit new. You know what I mean? So if you say, why am I so stupid? It was like, well, that one day, man, when you was trying to talk to that hot chick and you just started fucking stuttering. Nah, 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 nah. You's a dumb motherfucker. It, just, it will pull that shit up. Yeah. If you say, uh, whatever you type in there, how can I be more smart? Your brain just starts to look for that. In the last conversation, we talked about priming the subconscious mind. Yes. Look around the room, notice the color. Whatever you put in your brain, it just starts trying to pull up answers to support whatever you did. So we talked about whatever you focus on, you get more of what you get. So you change your focus by the inner dialogue. Whatever. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love that. You see what okay, I'm saying? Okay, yeah, definitely. So it's in a way, is it, is it in a way like speaking out to the universe? And and be careful what you say, because if you speak positive, then as I always say, if you speak speaking out to the universe, it the universe finds a way to make it happen. And I remember in the case in point, I remember in, in high school, all I wanted to do, man, was go to college and yeah. to wrestle. I wanted to be in the Olympics. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was go, go to college, wrestle, Division One school, wrestle, yeah. wrestle, wrestle. Yeah. So one day we were having a hard wrestling practice. I told my friend, I go, man, I don't want to wrestle in college. I said, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Yeah. I said that. We went back inside. Less than five minutes later, I injured my knee. I was yeah. out for half the season. Uh, yeah. And weird. I go, and that was when I went, I got to be careful what I say out in the universe. Yep. And I think that is a sign. I go, yep. be careful what you say, because the universe is always listening. Yep. And we talked about the science of how that works in the human mind. It's very true. Your mind is like Google, 
and your your mind is a GPS. We talked about those two things. Yeah. And w- why do we say that? We did the thing, look around the room and notice red. For the listeners that didn't do it, look around the room and notice white. Okay. Now, without closing your eyes, look around the room and not notice white. Look outside. Don't notice the white snow. I want you to not notice it. You can't do it. Because what happened was you primed your subconscious mind. Now, the reticular activating system keeps looking for whatever you primed it with. So you gave yourself inner dialogue to look for something. Now, even though your conscious mind is not doing it, just like a GPS, Mm. once you dial in whatever it is you put in there, so you got to put in a, a coordinate. That's your inner dialogue. That's the coordinate, right? Yeah. Of the GPS. Right, right, right. Now, your conscious mind, you could be driving, talking on the phone, chewing bubble gum, you know what I'm saying? What's up, girl? Yeah, right? And you're, you're, but the GPS still taking you where you... You don't have to focus on that no more. Oh, it's the subconscious oh, is the GPS. I love this. You see that? So yeah. now, what hap- that's how it, it, it begets itself in the universe, right? Because even... You done put that in your head. I don't want to do this no more. Bam! Your brain just... It just starts to... So that's why, if you notice, man, I want this red car... You just keep seeing that specific type of red because your subconscious is looking for it. You you have tuned out, yeah. just like your GPS. You put in the coordinates and you're like, girl, you know, you have that man, boy, I tell you what, uh, yeah, some, 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 some turn love here. Uh, you just, you see? Yes. And there's a roadblock. Like, okay, redirect. You're not doing that. It's doing it subconscious. Your brain's doing that all the time. That's what I mean by programming your GPS. And then it ends up taking you to the destination that you put the coordinates into. Oh, so that. that's when you when you speak it through your inner dialogue. Yes. Your inner the inner dialogue is coordinates. Yes. So then what happens is your subconscious is pulling everything from your past experience, your present experience, and potential future experiences, and it's trying to find its way to the coordinates oh, that you did through the inner dialogue. I love that. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yes, I definitely. And it manifests do. itself. Yes, I, I'm all about the manifestation and all yeah, that, man. Yeah. I love that. So it's all with the breathing and the inner dialogue. Yeah. And what else is there? So breathing and inner dialogue, and we talked about whatever you focus on, you get more of what you get. So um, I want you to notice my ashy ass hand right here, right? <laughs> that is ass. So, God <laughs> damn, that's ashy. <laughs> Woo, you've been, you been pa- playing in a fire, bro, in a fire. Bro, like a campfire. Oh, bro, I'm about to bleed out. This is crack. I'm going to crack a leak. Bro. You, you can I... write Kenny on your hand. <laughs> I ain't lying. That's how ashy right? that shit is. Boy, like you've been playing with powdered donuts. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> See, here you go. Here you go. Gargoyle. You remember that Disney cartoon? Gargoyles when the daytime, they'll turn into rock. <laughs> <laughs> Put some lotion and I wake back. Ah, how long was I sleep? A thousand years, bro. You turned into a rock in this month. Whenever I die, hey, I won't. I won't make sure the funeral director lotions me down. Boy, huh? people, people pass my casket. Look at that ashy huh? motherfucker. That boy, you know, especially our people. That man. ashy motherfucker. Huh? How, t- huh? how did he look? Ashy. But you, he, they are gonna get the use. BT was the funniest. He was a great man. They ain't gonna come to your cat, man. That motherfucker like lips chapped like a motherfucker. <laughs> our people is wrong, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they they gonna find something to say, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, when you so when I so how many fingers am I holding up right now? Five. All right. How many fingers am I holding up now? One. So I shifted your focus. You lost focus of the people walking by. So how did I shift your focus? Uh, you you held it up. You asked me, and so ah, I ah. Did. did you hear that? What the questions that you ask, the inner dialogue of the questions that you ask determine your focus. Your focus are the coordinates of the GPS, and you end up at the destination. So whatever questions you ask under pressure, your inner dialogue. So I was on a gun course, right? And, and I'll show you how inner dialogue works. Okay. This dude was shooting his gun, his gun jammed up. Shut, 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 shut. He got done. I told him about inner dialogue. So he got done. I said, hey, man. He said, yeah. I said, what happened? He said, my gun jammed. I said, what'd you say? He said, shit. I said, you look like shit, too. <laughs> <laughs> he said, damn. I said, so next time it happens, say tap, rack, because what you tend to say is what you tend to do. So people keep messing some, for instance, say you doing the bad combo wrong. You keep doing, say I say jab, jab, right cross, and you keep going jab, jab, elbow, jab, jab. Subconsciously, your brain is saying that or visualizing that. So if you coach yourself and say it, jab, jab, cross, you tend to do it, and you'll watch your, mis- as soon as you do that, I watch people's, Error go down by 50 to 75% just by coaching themselves. Because you don't realize the inner dialogue that you have the habit of making, the scripture writing. You ask yourself constantly, why am I so stupid? Why am I so fat? And then, then you keep manifesting that coordinate in your GPS. I'm horrible in that bag. I'm, I'm, when it comes to combos, I'm horrible. That's why I always go, right. you go, okay, right, 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 one, two. And then, and then you always go, BT, 
<laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> How many times you had to come behind me? And go, okay, but right, okay. Well, when you go, you'll get popped. So bam. You're not and that dude, that dude, that yeah. dude. Remember that dude, Monday? That, uh, that dude kept throwing. The punch, he kept hitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was rude. I, I wasn't blocking right. And bam, he hit me fucking twice. That's not true. You was blocking it with your face. Yeah. Right? He was like, ah, headbutt. Head. I'm fucking punch me again. I'm breaking knuckles. I was, I was, I was, he, was, nah. he was probably going, you're doing what you're supposed to do, and he kept yeah. hitting me. I'm like, God yeah, damn it. Yeah, I was yeah, so mad. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. like, you hit me one more time, I'm going to whoop your mother. Yeah. <laughs> in, in front of your kid. Right. <laughs> in front of your kid. <laughs> right. And your woman. Right, right. <laughs> you can't get no respect. Right, over. it's over with. <laughs> respect gone. Respect. R E S P E C K, motherfucker. <laughs> respect. <laughs> yeah. Man, I love that. I honestly, it, it that's what I love the most yeah. is the mental aspect. And then, and we were talking before, and you don't have to say any names, but we were talking about the aspect of the military and being one of the black Navy SEALs, you know, yeah. one, one of the 50 black Navy SEALs when yeah. you're going in, and some of the obstacles that you face. And, you know, I hate, and, and I have to preface this by saying, and yeah. I, I feel like I'm talking down to the audience, but I'm really not because. We're not saying anything bad, but it's there. That element is there. Yeah. And, and, and it's a small percentage, but those kind of people are yeah. there yeah. in the military. When I say those kind of people, they're everywhere. I mean, yeah. It's, it's going to be there regardless. Yeah, it's yep. going to be there. So, so there like, sure. w- did you have any experiences like that? Um, I did. Yeah. Um, and how'd you come? And how'd you get through that? Because I know Goggins talked about that. Yeah. He used that as as a, as a fuel, you know. To I remember he said we moved to Indiana, you know, how the KKK marched through yep. his town, and, and yep. he had to say, hey, you know, in that town, most of the people were really, really good people. They're still good friends, but yeah. there, but there's that element that you have to go through. And honestly, yeah. I think some of that fuels you. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, yeah. and people who aren't aren't going through it like it, 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 my, my situation it's because you're black yeah. but other people might be because they were gay yeah. or because of yeah. whatever yeah. so yeah. but for our situation and i'm speaking i'm hopeful to you but when you hear that and you yeah. go through, you know your whole life and you can't do anything about it it, it does kind of it's it, it's it fuels you a little bit yeah. so what yeah. did you go through in that if you you don't have to name any names but yeah yeah uh man i remember one dude we were talking about the the war and he said uh yeah man we was over here and we were shooting guns and and then these motherfuckers, these fucking niggas, they fucking, he just stopped. He's like, because <laughs> he was so used to saying it. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. And, and But now that that dude was PC in public, but you could see what was happening behind closed doors. Right, 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 so right. He, yeah, man, something, something, something. And these motherfucking nerds. And he looked at he, right away there. Yeah, his, his, his mouth became an asshole, a booty hole. You know how booty holes like, <laughs> that motherfucker said, and then motherfucker. <laughs> You know when you got shit real bad, you try a little turtle head come back. Like, we try to bring it back, and bro, you ain't done shit yourself, bro. It's too late. Stop prairie dogging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was prairie dogging. Like, <laughs> I, I look, bro. So for me, I just didn't. I didn't take it too personal. Right. I knew that came with the territory. Yeah. So I just didn't. It don't. The reason why I didn't take it personal. Um. So literally, right outside back of my academy, I went outside, and this dude. In front of everybody, was said, "If I call you nigga, would it offend you?" And everybody looked at me, like, and I was like, "I was like, you good, bro?" I just walked off. So this dude came up to me, say, "Hey, man, why didn't you whoop that motherfucker's ass?" I said, All right. "He goes, man, you're the one dude that could do it here." I said, right. and he said, "Oh, we're too beneath you, huh?" He took it wrong. I said, "No, nah, that's not it. My thing is, is somebody told me we were in a situation, an altercation, yeah. right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh. There's a funny story that came with it, but I'm not going to go there. So we were in a situation having a, uh, a heated debate, yeah. right? <laughs> and this motherfucker said, man, you disrespected me. And I go, how would I disrespect you if it's accurate? So if you murdered a motherfucker, you're a murderer. If you steal something, you're a thief. That's not disrespect. That's accuracy. So the only way we could solve a problem is if you, if, if you give nomenclature or, or name the problem, right? We can't solve it. So I got, I'm doing construction. There's a, a wall that's built out of square. Mm-hmm. You, I'm over here working on it. You come over here, he's like, fix the motherfucking wall. I'm like, all right. So I'm going to fucking throw some more nails on that motherfucker. You're like, that ain't it. Fix the motherfucking wall. I'm like, okay. okay. I cut a window on the motherfucker. In there. That ain't it. Fix the motherfucking wall. Motherfucker, what you want me to do? You, you have to name, bro, the wall's out of square. Right. You have to identify the problem. Yeah. And only people that don't want you to identify the problem, from my experience, are those that t- seem to want to continue having a problem. Yeah, right? yes, yes. So I knew there's a flip side to that. So when they said, motherfucking nigga, and I'd be like this. Well, I know that doesn't accurately describe me. Right. Now, it is disrespectful when it's not accurate. 
Right. So if I call you out of your name, well, don't act like it if you don't want me to call you out your name because that is what you're doing. It's mm -hmm. not out of your name. Mm -hmm. Don't act like it, right? I knew that that wasn't me, what they were saying. Right. So you can call me what you want. I know that ain't me. So I'm just laughing. Mm -hmm. So I handled it with humor. I didn't right. care. So this dude came up to me. Actually, it was a brother, man. So I was, I, man, I was an authentic brother. It was some other dude. I said, hey, man, I walked up to this brother. I saw, I said, oh, that's another black man. That's still me. Ran over there. We're going through training. I walked over to him. I said, hey, man, how you make it through this? That motherfucker looked around like he wanted to disown me, bro. His, this half, he did. Yeah, he said, <laughs> like, I can't be speaking to him. He looked, I was like, fuck's going on right here? I said, I said yo, bro, because you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My boy, my boy, you seen Key and Peele? Yes, yes. With the black Obama where he, he, yes. he said, hey, how you doing? How you doing? He got the brother. He said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my boys, they told me I was guilty of it. I, I finally admit that I am. Ain't I didn't right. realize ain't it. Ain't nothing wrong with you that. You feel me? Because I'm, but so, you know, I'm like, you know, but I'm still a brother. I'm, yo, yeah, okay, we got it. I'm, I'm just professional, right? right? Yes. And I'm not talking about, I call this the Teddy Ruxpin voice. I'm not talking about that kind of black professional. Yeah. Like, you can see how we talking like this. Exactly. Yo, what's up? What's happening? Yes. Motherfuckers, black people going to the corporate office. Like, Hello, my name is Kenneth Big B Jr. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Your radio voice, Teddy Ruxpin. I'm not talking about that. Was, I walked to this dude. I said, yo, because I was talking to this. I said, hey, fellas, I'm going to go over here and talk to this guy real quick. I said, all right. I said, all right. I'll be right back. I went over there. I said, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> yo, Captain was cracking. You know what I'm saying? West Side. <laughs> he did like that. He said, I said, how you make it through this, bro? What's cracking? He said. Just stay strong, man. Stay strong. <laughs> I said, fuck. I mean, you ain't black. I'm over. What the hell? He was embarrassed. This really happened, though. <laughs> so I was at the seal table. I was just an authentic brother, you know. So this other brother walks up to me. He goes, he goes, hey, man, I got to warn you about something. I said, what? He said, look, man, a lot of times in this world, man, they don't like the black man. They like the black guy. That's what he said to me. I said, oh, yeah. I'm going to keep being the black man in this moment. <laughs> what you was talking about? You know? So yeah. th that's just kind of some of the stuff that happened. The brother was trying to warn me, hey, man, if you if you too much yourself, you're going to have some problems. Right. Another guy came up to me, and he was a Marine. I'll never forget this dude. We went through training together. This dude came up with a group of dudes. And he said, so these are isolated incidents. So what I want to what I want to say is some of the best men I've ever met in the world Straight up, our different nationalities, white men, you know, Mexicans from the SEAL team. You, If you got somebody that'll die next to you, yeah. you'll find very few people like that, your own blood. I done met men that will sit there and die next to me. So these are just isolated incidents. Right, right. Because I've also met the very best men on the planet. Right. I've been fortunate, right? Yeah. But this dude wasn't one of them. <laughs> so he walked up to me, right? <laughs> and he's like, hey, Biggs. I said, yeah. He goes, why the fuck they let black people in the teams? So what you mean? He goes, because y'all know your motherfuckers can't swim. Well, he was a Marine, and we do lifesaving. And at that time, a lot of times, they'll go on, they'll have really big rucksacks. They're like 80 pounds. You got something called quick release so you can get it off so you don't drown. Well, sometimes they'll go down there and can't get it off. So we used to do water saving to go down there and save people. And he was a Marine, and they carried those big packs. I don't know if you've seen Save It Private Ryan. Yeah. They get off the boat. Remember when they were drowning? Yes. Well, that happens. So oh. they would... They would teach you to go in. One of the things would teach you go in, get the straps off, and then do life saving for them. Okay, okay. And okay. that's what you saw on Saving Private okay, Ryan, right? Okay. So he was a Marine. I know he carries those big packs. So he said, he goes, Pigs, why you even join the team? I said, What you mean? He goes, Because you know black people can't swim. I don't even know why they let black people join the team. He had this group of dudes, and I looked at them. They looked at me. It was a little Wild West moment, like, hurry, me I said, Okay. So then I looked, I said, I said, hey, man, the next time we're doing a, doing an op or a training activity, I said, and you fall in with your big Marine backpack? He said, yeah. I said, I'm going to make sure I'm the motherfucker that saves you. So real coy, like I said, I hope you drown, motherfucker, but I didn't say it. Right. And okay. all his homies started laughing. I said, hey, man, the next time you jump in there with that motherfucking pack and your old Marine ass one, he said, yeah. I said, I'll make sure I'm the motherfucker that saves you. And his boy like, <laughs> and he looked at me, and they were like, <laughs> he had a bunch of yes men, and they just walked off. You feel me? Yeah. So I didn't take it personal. I right. just handled it real coy because I knew that wasn't accurately me. Right. You get upset yes. when it, if you feel like it describes some of you. And if it describes you, well, man, fucking make a change. Yeah. Yes. You feel me? Look at the man in the mirror. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So yeah, yeah that, that's how I took it. It didn't, you, you call me that. If you call me out my name, it doesn't describe me. So what I'm upset. I want 
the reparations. Here's what I want. I want reparations because of how this country was built. And I mean everybody, not just us, but everybody. And I think everybody's got their got nerves except for us. So it's like, you know, they they want to um we had a thing with Aunt Jemima and uh, and Uncle Ben and how they were sorry and this and that. Yeah. Well then show your sorry yeah, yeah. by, you know, I want you to see the books on when that when that company was started and you pay those people or who are their family of those people, you pay those family of those people all the money you, since the very beginning and you pay that family th- that percentage all the, from here on out. From the from you know, well, my man asked me. I said, "Listen, man, the reason why we're asking for our inalienable rights is we helped build the country." He said, "What you mean?" I said, "Now, if I came to work and I didn't do no work, and I said, give me a motherfucking paycheck, that's a problem, right?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "But our people did the motherfucking work. Yeah. They helped build the we, shit. We built the Capitol. The we built the White House. Plant. Yeah, all there's all this stuff we didn't get credit for. You know, my grandfather started the uh, Strawberry Festival downtown. Really? Yeah, he used to work at Christ Church, man." Wow. And they wow. said, we got to do something to bring more people. And he said, well, why don't we have strawberry and a strawberry shortcake on the lawn right here at the circle? My grandfather did that. So my family was in, they were literally fighting. Um, my my cousin used to run the recorder and they were fighting. They had the history. They had the, the they had everything to show that he made that suggestion. And, and now it's this big thing and my family didn't get any credit. Wow. So my point is, is. What my people are asking for, at, at, at the least, is to get their inalienable rights, to be treated like a human being, not like a piece of property, because we did the work, right? so therefore we, we deserve that. My point about getting rid of colors, what I'm saying is, brother, it doesn't matter. Every human being should have inalienable rights. That's unquestionable. Yes. You yeah. feel me? Yes. So, so quit making it a difference between black or white. Now, when it comes to our people, we did the work. Give us our paycheck. We fought in the wars. We built. We physically built it. We contributed so, man, give us give us our respect. Give us our inalienable rights. That's, we deserve that. That's beautiful. Me, personally, I don't want reparations, and my people have been slighted. Right. We don't get credit for a lot. What I want is responsibility. Did you know that, from from what I understand, that uh, African Americans are the one that helped to develop the Republican Party? Did you know that history? Yes. Uh, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Yes. So yeah. it's weird because yeah. so the Republican Party makes us less reliant on the government because we don't – we're not asking you to – I don't – so this is what I'm saying. If somebody beats you in warfare, you, you don't expect them to help you. So I'm not asking for you to give me nothing. Give me respons- Give me my inalienable rights and give me responsibility. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me govern my money. I don't need you all involved in my stuff. Let me. And that was little Africa. Yeah. Right. Give me. Give we we would once we have responsibility, we cultivated something. So I'm cool on the reparations. Give me responsibility so I can build something. and Give me credit for it from here forward. Let's go. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I don't. I don't. I don't expect a bad guy to give me a handout. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me responsibility. That's yeah. all I'm asked for. Yeah. Me and you'll make something crack. We'll throw that reverse elbow on that ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't want, you know, the handout, but what, but I, I do I want, it. you know, that it, yeah. that's only fair if we made a financial, no. if, if we made a contribution no. to the building of a country and that is documented. Hey. Okay, then, then, hey, just pay up. Hey, just pay up. If 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 you've done the work, if hey. you've done the work. Hey, somebody just showed me a whiskey, and I think uh, Jack Daniels. Yeah, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. There's some some called Uncle Something. There's another whiskey. We gotta look it up. It's called Uncle Something, and he showed them the the recipe of how to do it. I, and he never got credit. And I, trust me, I know. And now they I and know. now they made this <laughs> bottle in homage to him because that's how Jack Daniels. So yeah. and that happened to my own family, yo. So, so you know, so, so just pay up. You you got you got money. You're not gonna go broke. Everybody's I gonna be getting drunk. You're not gonna go broke. I so feel. why don't you just cut a check I, and, and you know, cut I a percentage, you. a two per three percent percentage. You know, you're not gonna go broke. If you show up and go to work and they don't pay you a check, it's a problem. <laughs> they did the work. That's <laughs> a problem. I, I feel where you're coming from. You know, I mean, that's, that's all we're asking, man. Oh, but real quick, real quick, let's get to the, uh, the uh, what we're talking about. Yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. The, the, those two things. So so we did three tools. There's more, but three simple tools that you can use right now for peak performance under pressure. Okay, what's that? The first one, breathing. We talked about. Talked about breathing. Second one, inner dialogue. Inner dialogue. Right. Coach yourself. Okay. Right. Coach yourself. Um. The third one is how you use your physiology. Right. Okay. We talked about that. Okay. We talked about uh, trying to be happy when your body's sad. Right. Right. They're trying to be sad when your body's happy. You can't be sad looking like this. You can't. We talked about the vagal nerve and the vagal reaction. Right. So if you tie those three in, it doesn't matter what's happening circumstantially. Right. You become resourceful in the situation. What do I mean? You're breathing, which allows your mind to wake up. You move from reaction to response. 
then from there, you, you control your inner dialogue. You start programming your GPS. Right. And you start to elicit the responses that you want from your resources, not from the external resources. And the last one is you got to move that way. What I tell people, say SEAL Team 6 or Delta, right? They come through, man. You a hostage. BT's a hostage in this motherfucker. They would let you go. They'd be like, that motherfucker's too crazy. Right? They, <laughs> so, say so you a hostage, right? So, you hear the helicopter. It lands. Boom, 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 boom. They kick the door open. They land. Hey, man, will you please come with me? <laughs> would you feel safe with them motherfuckers? And they body like, yeah. hey, man, please come with me. He'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to just stay here with this. Sitting next team, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, I got hummus. I got hummus. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if the same thing happens. You a hostage. Boom, pop, 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 pop. You're bad guys are kicking the door. Motherfucker with me right now, all day, every day. Let's go. You're like, yeah. <laughs> it's the way they move it because you know that they are at full capacity. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. You know they're at full capacity. Here's the thing in life: there is no guarantees. There's only probabilities. Oh, I love that. Okay. There's no guarantees. Right. Nothing works. 100% of the single leg don't work every time, but that is the highest probability percentage in wrestling, the single leg. So mm. if you were to choose, yeah. you're going to choose the thing that gives you the greatest chance. So as a warrior, you got to accept two things. Jocko talked about it. You have to be willing to kill and willing to die. So you have to understand that there is no guarantees when you approach something. You have to accept the mortality of the chances, right? When you go for something, you might not get it. But the one thing you do control, and here's how you can improve your confidence immediately, mm -hmm. right? You take account for what you do know, mm -hmm. and you take account for what you do control. So this guy said, man, you know, sometimes when I roll with high ranks in jiu I get kind of nervous. I said, man, because you're worried about what can happen. You're worried about what will happen, and you're worried about what you don't know. Why don't you shift your mental paradigm to, I'm going to execute, I'm going to give my best performance. I don't really give a damn what happens. Right. I'm going to execute, the, here's my favorite move. I'm going to try to execute that. Your mind is focused. We talked about, how can I, so you ask a different question. I don't want them to tap me out. So you say, how can I execute that armbar I like? Your, your, your resources shift. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a situation to gain confidence, because the unknown is one of the greatest things that creates fear. Yes. It will always be the unknown. Yeah. So now you need to take account of what you do know and what you do control. Okay. And then you need to start to take immediate action on those things, because they will always be the unknown. That will start to give you immediate confidence in any situation. Oh, that's beautiful. So three tools for peak performance under pressure. Okay. Control your breathing control immediately. Number two, your inner di dialogue. Your mind is like Google. You can get through this. You can get right? through this. You can get through this. Ask it. You ask it questions. It will give you the, the best answer. Right? Right. The answer is okay. always within you. The answer is always within with you. Yes. You start to develop that by asking certain questions. Right. right. And number three is you need to move like a winner. It doesn't matter. Because sometimes your mind is not in it. If you move your body, it starts the vagal nerve and vagal reaction. It makes the mind stronger. Sometimes you got to use your inner dialogue to get your body moving. So movement. Movement helps build confidence. Movement. Even if you don't feel it, man, I ain't feeling today, Ken. I'm with these yep. combos. But you yep. know what? I'm going to move like a winner. Yep. That's the whole purpose of martial arts. You hit the mat. You got to assume certain. It doesn't matter how your day went. And the, the Japanese tradition of taking off the shoes before you hit the mat and all that stuff. Man, in that walk of life, that's done. Had a bad day at work. I come in here. That walk of life is done. I put that walk of life up, and now I'm about to execute like that, like you talk about compartmentalize. That's a whole nother chapter, a whole nother thing. Right. But you compartmentalize that. That was bad. I'm leaving that behind. Now I'm going to move and act. I just lost over here. I'm going to reset. I'm going to move like a winner. I'm going to talk like a winner. I'm going to breathe like a winner. That will have an immediate effect. That will increase your probability. There's no guarantees, but that will increase your probability of success right away. Oh, I love that, man. Love that. That's beautiful. What was the other thing you want to talk about? You talked about that. You said, man, you would ask me a question on the last episode. You said, hey, man, uh, what happens? I said, you got to find your why. I said, if you don't have the answer to why, when you get to that point, when you say, man, uh, everybody thinks something's a good idea. You say, I'm going to go, I'm going to talk to this hot chick. Man, when she comes out to be local crazy, you say, <laughs> why in the hell did I date this chick? Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've all been there. We've Bro, all been there. When you pursue something, it looks like a good idea until the obstacles start popping yes. up. Yes. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then inevitably your mind, because your mind is created for self-preservation. Right. So it says, hey, man, I'm putting in too much and I'm not getting enough out. We need to withdraw. Pull out game need to be strong in this instance. You feel me? That's I got a great pull out game. Yeah, there you go. Undefeated. Right. Uh, Undefeated. Uh, 52 and 0. Uh. <laughs> so, so, so 
your brain does self-preservation. And it goes, bro, this isn't worth the investment. If you ran out of calories in the wild and you just kept running, you would just die. So its job is to say, hey, man, the input doesn't equal the output. It's time to cash out. And we talked about the colloquialisms in society, right? We say uh, if that person keeps going when they, when they should have quit, when there wasn't enough return on investment, that person has what? Heart, right? We right. talked about that. Right. We say, man, you have to make the better of two choices. You say, well, follow your what? Your heart, you see? So in the colloquialisms of our language, we know where to, to pursue beyond reason because reason says when it ain't going right, check out. Right. So if you follow reason, you'll check out when it gets hard. You say, well, what do you do when it gets hard? You have to follow your heart. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, what I talked about in the last episode is we have intelligence in the heart called sensory neurites. They have discovered, so we say that because we didn't have the science, but you literally have intelligence in your heart, sensory neurites. So how do you get there? Here's what happens. So you say, why the hell am I doing that? So your favorite motorcycle? Ducati. Ducati. Oh, that's my baby. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I said, I said, the way that you find the why, so when, when you get there, you go, why the hell am I doing that? I said, if you don't have an answer, you quit. Right? So how do you find the why? So why? I said, it's, I call it the five whys. So why do you like Ducati? This is where we started. I love the handling. The look. The look is so beautiful. It's yeah, sexy. sexy. Okay. Like why? That. Why do you like that? Why do I like sexy? Who yeah, why do you sexy? like the look and sex? Why? Why do you like it? Why, I, I, why do I breathe? I mean, it's like, it, 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 it turns me on. It, it's, it's, it's something about it made me go, bing. It makes me just, uh, it turns me on. Ah. It gives me a sensation. Ah. It's almost, it's almost like your peppermint patty like, gives me a sensation. Ah. So when I see it it, 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 it wakes me up like, oh, there's, there's, there's Ducati. There's my baby. Nice, nice, that, that nice. Look. So what is that feeling? Uh, it, I can't say euphoric. But it's it's a feeling of excitement okay. of, uh, of of it hits it it it, it, I, it touches a nerve I guess yeah. because when I see it it's like like before I got through Ducati I was going through what, what kind of motorcycle do I want this yeah. one this one that yeah. I was like this bike's okay this bike but when I saw that bike I went that's the one I want so I just ah. knew it, that's the one I want ah. it, it, it just boom it something went off like it went off like that what was that emotion excitement excitement so it's not the Ducati you like you like excitement the excitement of the way that bike looked yeah but. What you th the bike made you feel excitement? Yeah, you see what I'm saying. So yeah. I was talking to a guy about motorcycles, right? And this guy was was I mean he was one of the the top guys in the FBI. Okay, he yeah. was one of the top guys in the FBI. He said he likes Harley. I said why you like Harley? He said I like the butterflies and this and that. And I said you can get that on any motorcycle. He said yeah. I said why you like Harley? He said I kept asking him. He said because it says fuck the status quo, because that's who he is. Yeah, you like Harley because that's he is that person. Harley, he likes rebellion. He likes to yeah. So what I'm saying is, your why is excitement. If your life doesn't have excitement, it's over with. Yeah. Ducati equals excitement to you. Oh, that's... Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, what you link and attribute to excitement, you can link anything to it, but your why is excitement. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to find your why. Why am I doing this? Because it's... A, so when obstacles pop up... So for me, a lot of times when I teach tactical courses, I say, why are you doing this? Why? Well, I want to learn how to shoot. And then ultimately it comes down to peace. They want to have inner peace that their their friends and family are saving. It comes down to peace. See what I'm saying? So yeah. now they, they know why. So when it gets hard, they're like, hey, man, I need to do this because peace is the most important thing to them. That's what you... That's called your value. So you value excitement. That's your why. That's the why. Fucking you know beautiful. Yes, man. Honestly, and that can translate to acting. Because I was just thinking about that. Like, yeah, because that's what my acting teacher was about. Find the why. Uh, why are you saying this line? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why, why did that person react this way to the line? Why? Find why? your why. why. And that's fucking it. Here's the thing. So I brought all that up to say this, BT. Check it out. The reason why I talked about the mind and the sensory neurites. Why? Because when I keep asking you why, you hit a point on the last episode. You did, I say, why? Why? Do you know, yeah. You hit a wall because the brain can't answer that. Yeah. Excitement is not in the brain. Your why is not a mental thing. That's why they say that this person, they, they should have quit. Self-preservation should have kicked in and said, this is not reasonable. Well, what makes you keep going when it's not reasonable? It's the emotion. It's the, the intelligence of the heart. You say, why you like that girl? Well, why you? I don't know, man. I can't answer it with my mind. And my heart has betrayed so me many a time when it came to that. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't the right one, but it's the right why. So here goes my point. 
You keep yes. asking why the brain. You'll hit a wall with the brain, and then you'll get. But when you find the answer, you'll get butterflies. You say, ah, because there's intelligence in the gut and in the heart, sensory neurites, right? So they'll say, boop, that's the why. Now the mind and the heart work together. I'm gonna show you one last thing. Patriotism is not just an act of intelligence, right? Because patri- to be a, a patriot, you gotta. Maybe guys get their arms blown. You hear them about saving a bunch of different soldiers, and then they finally make it home, then they die. They're patriots, right? Patriotism isn't a mental act. He should have died. His body was ready to die a long time ago, but he kept going. Why? You say he's got heart, right? So let's look at the act of patriotism. Let's look at the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States. What do you do? You take your hat off your what? Your and head. you put it where? On your heart. Why? You're oh. linking that connection. That's the point. Oh my God! Patri- patriotism isn't a mental act. Yeah, because you that dude would have gave up when he got shot eighty-seven times. Why did he keep going? Because it's an act of the mind and the heart. You got to go beyond the mind. That's what. That's why we say he's got heart. Because subconsciously we know the the mind's job is to preserve you. Once it's too hard, you disengage. But the heart will say, the "Heart takes over." This excitement, this thing is worth more. Than the, than the obstacles, because this means fulfillment of the excitement in my life. That's how you find joy. Oh, my God. That's beautiful, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> my man. I mean, man, I honestly, God, I, I, I feel it again. I feel like I'm about to get out of here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything. I, 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 can, I can do everything. Man, I need to talk to you every morning, man. Like, Kenny, talk to me again. Okay. And then what? Okay. Gotcha. And hey. I, I'll do it. I'm serious. You man. got, bro, when you show up to class, bro, the, the okay. whole the light in the room change. I'm like, where'd all this light come from? The energy. <laughs> He's like, get it, motherfucker. Get it. I'm like, yeah, get that shit up. Oh, I'm supposed to be inspiring motherfucker. <laughs> well, I was, I was so I mean, I was like tired and I was dragging. I said, like, fuck it, I gotta get my way up. So yeah. when they do hit you know, punch, I'm like, come on, man, you can do it. Come yeah. on, do it. And I was like, yeah. fuck. I was yeah. getting myself up. Yeah. And in the process, I think everybody else got up their game. So I was like, okay, it kind of worked. That's, I mean, that's what we're talking about. So yeah. you started using your words and yeah. your body different. My inner dialogue. That's the middle tool. And that's what I did. Oh, my God. I See? All because of Kenny. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you watch Tales from the Gemini, I honestly, I love every episode I do. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. All my guests, I love. And I mean that. This with these last two, man. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just, I can't wait to do something right now. I'm, 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 I'm stoked, man. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny Bigby. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If you're ever in Indiana... Go to Plainfields, right next to the airport. If you have a long, long layover, go work out with Kenny. You can look him up. Uh, go to his website. It's uh, dragonflymma.com. You can go to Dragonfly Elite. Dragonflyelite.com. Yep. Uh, yep. Look him up. Kenny Bigby, one of the 50 Black Navy SEALs. My guy. And my friend more than anything. My friend. And we go at it, but he always gets the best of me, but I don't care. Anyway. That ain't true. He's got this spinning elbow. <laughs> Hey, man, the honor and the privilege is mine, bro. I appreciate you, bro. Kenny Big, For thank sure. you so much. Honestly, you, you are an inspiration to people. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Go to his website, and I promise you, I promise you, you will want to be a better person. I feel it already. I can't wait. Honestly, when I get out of here, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go jog 20 miles. I don't know. So anyway, I can tell you what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to get some lotion on these hands. <laughs> I'm BT. That's Kenny. Until next time. You know how I say I'm about this time. Bye.